Okay, uh, let's get started. So, um, first problem here. Um, just a reminder that, that I haven't written this down incorrectly uh, by accident. I uh, don't want to do your homework for you, but I will help you and work a very similar problem for each of the problems that you have. So, um, here we have a, a jacket. It comes in several sizes and several colors. So, we want to know how many total jackets uh, could we have. We could have a, a small blue one. We could have a medium blue one, and we could keep going like that. We could have a medium black one. All right, sorry, small black one and a medium black one, and on and on it could go. Um, so just in case you didn't catch it or you weren't there or what, um, we use tr tree diagrams to help us see uh, how we can easily calculate this. So here you are, and you're you are uh, wondering. Well, first, what size should you get? Well, you could choose small, medium, large, or extra large. Which size should you get? So you, uh, you decide that. Okay, so say you choose medium. Uh, then you can choose a color. You can choose uh, blue, black, red, or yellow. Okay, uh, so here is one, what we call an outcome. An outcome where the first event, you choosing uh, a size, that'd be what we could call event A. Well, that, that event happened uh, or ended by you choosing a medium. Then event B, I should make room for what I'm going to write here. Event B, that's where you choose a color. Well, that ended in you choosing blue. So uh, an outcome would be event A and then event B. Uh, so you choose medium, you choose blue, you have a medium blue jacket, that is one outcome, that's one possibility. You could have also gone extra large, um, and uh, after you chose extra large, you could have chosen a red color. So choosing extra large, event A, choosing red, event B, choosing them both in a row, that's uh, one outcome. And uh, so now there's a total of two. Let's count all the, the total, total, total. So each of these would have four coming off of it. So each end of the branches at the, at the very like right side of the tree diagram represents a unique outcome. And all you have to do to calculate them is, is we notice with those four branches here, each of those four branches has four branches. So it's four times four. If we had another, another color like um, uh, white, you could get a white jacket. Okay, well then each of these four sizes would then have a fifth branch coming off of it. Okay, and instead of 16, we would have 20 possibilities. Right? And if we, should, if we threw another size on there, right, then this guy would have five choices as well, and we'd have five times five, and that would be, ooh, I wrote that really well, five times five, 25 possible jackets. right? So this is the fundamental counting principle. We just multiply the number of ways event A can happen by the number of ways event B can happen by the number of ways event C can happen. If there's a third event, we just keep going. OK, so here we're making a license plate. And we want to choose four letters. And there's two parts to this, uh, four letters and three digits. Uh, part A would be order. Well, uh, no, it was um, A is repeats are allowed. So uh, for instance, A, 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 and then uh, 2, 2, 2, that's allowed. Okay. Um, B repeats are not allowed. So this would not be allowed under condition B. Okay. So let's move B down and we'll work on A. If repeats are allowed, we just got to think in terms of events. So there's, uh, we could think seven events. Choose the first thing, second thing, fourth thing, fifth, sixth, and seventh thing. Uh, whoops, nope. I don't know where I lost count, but I did not count seven correctly. Okay, so we choose a, a letter. Okay, choose a letter, a letter, a letter, a letter, then a number, a number, and a number. Well, repeats are allowed. Let's see the first choice that I have and how many digits there are. Well, there's one through nine and then there's zero, so there's ten digits that I could put there. Um, and repeats are allowed, oh, I'm on letters, excuse me. Letters, how many letters are there? 26 letters. And I can choose any of the 26 letters again and again 
and again. And here I want to choose digits. I can choose 10 digits, 10 digits, 10 digits. I have 26 choices for this letter. 26 for this, 26, 26. Anything's allowed. Repeats are allowed. So we just multiply all of these together. And uh, I'm not going to try and do that in my head. So we have 26, let's say to the fourth, because we're multiplying it four times, times 1,000. You can multiply that by your, you know, in your head pretty quickly. So uh, four, five, six, nine, seven, six, and three zeros. Uh, four, five, six, nine, seven, six, so what is that? 456,976,000. Okay, so repeats will not be allowed now. Still we're choosing four letters and then three numbers. This looks real good. Uh, okay, first letter. Any number or any letter is fair game. Twenty-six choices, but now we have, a, you know, we cannot choose this letter, whatever it was. If we chose A, we can't choose A here, so that limits our choice by one. So we have twenty-five choices. Next, we have twenty-four choices. Next, we have twenty-three choices. Um, okay, so that's how many ways you can pick those four letters, uh, so that you don't get any repeats. Next. Uh, we choose our digits. So we can choose any of the 10 digits here, but then we have one less digit to choose from and one less digit to choose from. So now this is how it looks. So, yeah, come on. Uh, clear this out. 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times 10, 9, and 8. So we have uh, fewer choices. Doesn't seem like that many fewer, but uh, it, it's fewer. Two, so two, five, eight, three, three, six. Okay, so um, somewhere in the neighborhood of half as many choices as if repeats were allowed. Okay, so the main idea here is that when you're arranging a lot of the uh, of things from a set of things, here, let me explain, you know, the set of things that we're choosing from would be the alphabet, the letters in the alphabet. Um, and when you can't repeat that, and that happens particularly when you're trying to arrange, say, people, you can't repeat people, the same person can't uh, be two things at once or two places at once. So we you know, step it down by one uh, each time. So there's that. Uh, 15 factorial. Let's remind what 15 factorial means. It means 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 and on and on and on until we get down to 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. Of course, this is a big pain to do if uh, you have a number as big as 15. Uh, so instead of 15 times 14 and then taking forever, we'll just take 15, hit the math button. We go over a few times until we highlight the PRB and go down to the factorial, and it does it for us. So this is uh, 1.30767, let's say, 1.30767 times 10 to the 12th. So that would roughly be 1.307, sorry. Uh, if we multiply by 10 to the 12, we're multiplying it by 1 with 12 zeros. And if you remember the trick of, uh, you know, multiply by 10, you had you, you move the decimal over 1. Multiply by 100, move it over 2. Multiply by 1,000, move it over 3. So multiply by 1 with 12 zeros, move the decimal place over 12. So we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 places. So 15 factorial is in the uh, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. It's over 1.3 trillion. Okay, so here is the big bad, don't do this, no, never. It is not 42 factorial. That's just wishful thinking. You're not uh, uh, really thinking about what six factorial means. You're just hoping that seven times six, uh, you know, it's 42 and then we'll just throw a factorial on it. Hey, why not? Well, because let's just take it nice and, and slow and, and think about it for a second. Use our um, analytical skills. Uh, 42 factorial. You saw how big 15 factorial was. That was huge. It was in the trillions. 42 factorial is going to be just astronomical. Okay. So um, 
think about let's think about six factorial. It's just six times five times four times three times two times one. It's gonna be fairly big, but it's not gonna be that big. It's just six times five times four times three times two. You could do that. Uh, you know, it wouldn't take very long uh, to just do in your head. So imagine we take that number. It's not too big. Multiply it by seven. Well, that's not gonna be very much bigger. You know, seven times bigger, but not that much bigger. Not nearly as big as 42. You know, 15 factorial, like I just said, was in the trillions. This is gonna be way, way beyond the trillions. This isn't gonna be anywhere near that when we just multiply this by a seven. That, that's not gonna work. So, um, don't don't do that. Um, you know, five factorial plus two factorial is not 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 seven factorial. No. Um, factorials uh, really just don't go together very well. They don't combine. They don't uh, come together and and form one mega factorial. They just don't go together that well. Um, so be careful of that. Um, so to do this, really the best thing to do is to try not to, to really simplify it too much. Just go ahead and, and do it. So I'm going to bring this back up and just get rid of the 15, replace it with a 6. Okay, that's 720. Big number, sure, but not in the trillions. And then multiply that by 7, 5,040. Nowhere even remotely near. By many orders of magnitude, this number is smaller than 42 factorial. Um, just so happens though, I just kind of made this up, but it turns out if we take 6 factorial, which is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and we multiply it by 7, well then we've tacked down a 7, and 7 is just like 1 bigger than 6. So what we have there is actually 7 factorial. So 7 factorial would also be 5040. So just a coincidence, not really a property of factorials or anything that should take up your brain space. If you notice it, go ahead, write it, you know, write seven factorial. But you still have to figure out what that number is. Um, 9p4, okay, so the, the formula for this, let's do it by hand and then we'll do it with the calculator, um, is uh, nine factorial over nine minus four factorial. That's nine factorial over five factorial. Um, that is 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 5 factorial. Well, what's 5 factorial? It's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, that 1 will cancel that one. That's silly. But then 2 will cancel 2. 3 cancels 3. 4 cancels 4. 5 cancels 5. So really what we have is 5 factorial here, 5 factorial down here. They cancel each other out. And then we're just left with 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. Um, and honestly, I don't want to make you sit here while I try and figure that out. So 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 is 3,024. Okay. Um, or your calculator can do this in this way. 9 factorial divided by 5 factorial. Like that. That's going to be 3,024. Or... You hit 9, you go over to math again, same menu, but there is the P and PR. So you just hit 9, 9 is going to be N, R is going to be whatever we put in here afterwards, so we put a 4, and again, it's 3,024. Okay, here's this one again. It's 17 factorial over 6 factorial. Um, so we're going to get... 17 times uh, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and then 6 all the way down to 3, 2, 1. The 6 factorial is 6 all the way down to 3, 2, 1 multiplied together. So this cancels all of these that are at the end. And we just get the, the 17 times every number before it all the way down to 7. Um, oh, man, I misspoke. Hold on a sec. It's not 17 factorial over 6 factorial. It's 17 over 17 minus 6 factorial. So 
that's 17 factorial, 17 factorial over um, 11 factorial. So that's 7 times 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and then 11, and all the way down to 3, 2, 1. For 11 factorial, 11 times everything that comes before it cancels out all the factors of 11, 10, 9, and so on. And now we just have 17 times every number before it on down to 12. And the calculator can do this for us. I'll just bring this back up. I'll put in uh, 17, and 6, and it is very large. Um, 8, 9, 10. 8, 9, 10, 20. Okay, so it's in the millions. All right, um, so we are just going to, uh, I just made up this scenario so you, you can go to uh, pretty much any sandwich shop and they'll build you a, a sandwich based on uh, these kinds of things. Uh, so we want to look at how many possible sandwiches are there. And actually this is a little bit different than uh, the one that you're looking at in your book, uh, number 62. So I'm just going to cross out for a second the veggies part. Okay, We're just going to talk about these three things that you can pick. Um, you can pick one meat, one cheese, one bread. Picking one out of a list is, is very much what we're used to in um, uh, counting, the counting principle. All right. So event one is you pick the meat. You can see it. Lay, you know, laid out here for you. Then you choose a cheese. Then you choose a bread. How many ways can you choose a meat? You can choose uh, five different meats. You can choose five different uh, cheeses. And coincidentally, you can choose from five different breads. That's 125 different sandwiches. Okay. This other scenario, that would be where we don't cancel out or cross out the veggies. Okay, we choose a meat, a cheese, and a, uh, a veggie and then a bread. So I guess this would be um, really a 10.2 question, okay? But we're good, we're about to go into 10.2, so why not talk about it? Um, so we can choose one of five meats, one of five cheeses, uh, one of five breads, but how many ways can we choose two veggies from six veggies? Um, well, the long and short of it is I guess maybe it's just the short of it. 6C2. From six different veggies, I'm choosing two of them. And C, because it doesn't matter if I pick pickles before iceberg lettuce. It doesn't matter. Um, so if that doesn't matter, if that order isn't important, then we use C combinations. Combinations are just groups of stuff. All right. So that'll turn into 5 times 5 times, let's see what 6C2 is. To bring up the calculator. 6 C 2. 15. So that's 15 ways that can happen times uh, 5. And that's a well, 125 times 15. 1875. All right, on to uh, 10.2. Here, uh, 7C3, as I just described, if we had seven things, like uh, seven people, and we wanted to just pick them to be in a group together, like be uh, on a classroom assignment, something like that, uh, how many different groups of three, different, unique, distinct groups of three, uh, can we make out of those seven people? Well, we would use 7C3, how does that look? Well, first let's start with seven factorial. Okay, seven factorial, that would be if you were to line all seven people up in a row, okay, with, with respect to order, order is important here. Uh, someone comes in first, someone comes in second, third, and all the way down to the seventh person. Okay, well, first of all, we don't care about all seven people. We only care about three of these people, right? We only care about seven, eight, seven, seven, like these guys right here. We have seven people to choose from, then we have six, and then we have five. And we don't care about these four, three, two, one, right? Only these guys. So part of it is seven minus four, right, gives us, um, or sorry, seven minus three, seven minus three gives us that 
four factorial, it cancels out these guys here. Get rid of those because we don't care about them. We only care about using the first three, which means for the first guy we could choose seven, for the second person we could choose uh, out of six, and out of, for the third person we could choose out of five. But the problem with that is it's still ordering them, it's still taking three people. It's taking person A, B, and C, and it counts the, how many different ways they can be ordered. So it goes B, A, C, and C, A, B, and it counts them all the different ways that that can happen, right? Um, well, how many ways can that happen? Well, it can happen uh, if we have three things and we want to put them all in order, that's three factorial. Uh, so we can count you know, all of these guys three factorial ways, all right? But we only want to count this once. We just want to count A, B, C, not all of the different ways you can order them. Okay, and for that matter, um, let's say we take person A, B, and then D. So this is a different combination, and we just want to count that. But the way we're counting it now, just by canceling out these last four guys, All right, so I had to pause there for a second, kind of forgot where I was exactly, but um, I was making the point here that every time you make a group, um, if, we're, if we're counting it this way, what we have right now is seven times six times five, and so that, that takes every possible group of three and arranges it in every way that it can arrange it. Okay, so it, it'll take ABC, arrange it in all three factorial ways. It'll take ABD and arrange it in all three factorial ways. Um, Right, so there's three factorial there. Um, one last one, A. We got seven people to choose from, so A, B, uh, E. Okay, that's another group, and it'll count that three factorial times. But what we're really interested in is like, if we could think of it like maybe the alphabetical order, right? Only one ordering is important to us, just the three different people in a group together, that's all we care about. Okay, but currently, the way it's counted now um, is basically 7P3, that's what we have right now. And that, that takes every group and orders them. Well, that takes every, you can imagine we can keep writing these forever, well not forever, for uh, a little while, and, um, and we'd only care about like just how many like columns there are, right? But uh, we have, when you count them this way, we have that, all those columns and you know, they go, it goes three factorial in this direction. <clears throat> so just figure out how many columns are, we just divide by three factorial. Okay, so we'll divide this by three factorial. So what that does essentially is takes uh, all the ways that you can take three people out of seven and, and order them, okay? And then we divide it by the number of ways that you can order those three people so that we can disregard the order and just concentrate on how many groups there are without respect to order, okay? And I'll just show you that when you write this out, all of these are going to cancel. You'll, you'll always wind up with one in the denominator. So you got two and two, that cancels and becomes a three. That's a three, cancels with a three. So seven times five, that should come out to be 35 possibilities, 35 combinations. So seven, I'll do that math, C, five, um, 21. What did I do wrong? Let's see. Two, Oh, no. 25, 25. Oh, because I put a five instead of a three, so that's uh, the only issue there. There we go, 35. Anyway, um, yeah, onward and upward. Okay, uh, 14C4. Let's think about it like in, a, in terms of a scenario where we use combinations. Let's say we have 14 people. Okay, only we want to choose 14 of them for a study group. If you've got 14 people and you're choosing 14 of them for a study group, a study group implies there's no importance to the order of these people. Uh, whether one of them comes first or second or third, it doesn't matter. You're still just a blob of people studying, okay? Uh, everybody's the same. So if that doesn't matter, then how many ways can you choose 14 people from 14 people to be in a group where order's not important? Well, you think about it. 
we'll do the formula and, and see what happens. We got 14 factorial over 14 minus 14 factorial uh, times uh, 0. Uh, let's see. No, times 14 factorial. Silly me. Okay, so we got 14 factorial over 14 factorial times 0 factorial. So that brings the question, what is 0 factorial? Um, well, by necessity, 0 factorial must be equal to 1. Okay, That happens with different number of systems you know, and, and, and functions, like factorial is a function. What does it mean to say 0 factorial? Well, you might think it means to say, well, it's 0, or 1 times 0, or um, you might have a lot of different theories. But here's the thing. This combinations formula needs to serve its purpose. It needs to serve the purpose of, say, calculating how many groups there can be um, from 14 people, if we want 14 people in the group. Well, if you thought about that, you might have thought, well, there's only one way to do that. There's only one way to take 14 people and put all of them in one group where order isn't important. We don't need to arrange them in different orders. Nobody needs to be president or vice president or secretary. Just everybody is just there. And that's just one way to, to take 14 people and put them in a group. So um, if this were 0, we'd be dividing by 0. We'd have 14 factorial times 0 would be 0. And we'd be dividing by 0. We can't divide by 0. Okay. We also know that this needs to, by looking at it this way, needs to come out to be 1. Right? So the 14 needs to cancel the 14. We need to not divide by 0. So 0 factorial must be 1. And you might think that, I don't know, that's cheating, or that's weird, or that's confusing. But there are just times when um, we look at a new function, or we look at a new uh, number system. Um, I'm talking about we, as a global we, as uh, mathematicians. And uh, by new, I mean they were new at some point. Factorial was new at some point. Um, and somebody s said, well, what about zero factorial? What would that be? Um, and it turns out it needs to be 1. Okay, So 14c14 is one. There's only one way to choose all 14 people to be in a group that does not respect order. Uh, it turns out zero factorial has to be one. Okay, three spades and two other cards. Uh, we're choosing a, a, a hand of five cards, and uh, so we're trying to figure out how many uh, hands of this kind are possible. Okay, so here we get three spades. And here we get two not spades. That little, that little straight with a, a down perpendicular little thing. That's that means not in mathematics. We like symbols, and that takes about half the time it takes to write the word not. So we like to write that. So two not spades. All right. How how many ways can we choose three spades? Um, does it matter which order they come in? No, it doesn't. So let's just at least say we're going to use combinations. It doesn't matter what order the spades come in. OK. Um, well, how many, you got to think, how many are you choosing from? We could think this is from. And how many are we, you know, how many, the number of things that we're picking out of it, right? This will always be the larger number. This will be the smaller number. Okay, so how many are we choosing from? How many cards are spades? Uh, well, there's 13 of them. 13 cards are spades. Okay, we know we're going to make these two be spades, so we're going to limit ourselves to the 13 cards that are spades. How many are we choosing? We're choosing three of them. We don't care what order they're in, so we're choosing three without respect to order from 13 cards. All right, now we want to get two not spades. Okay, um, well, how many cards are not spades? Well, there's uh, 39 cards left that are not spades. Okay, um, just gonna make sure that that is correct. Yeah, there are 39 cards that aren't spades. These are all the clubs and hearts and diamonds added together. And we're choosing from there two cards uh, with no respect to order uh, from those cards that are not spades. All right, so from here we're choosing three cards from the 13 that are spades, two cards uh, from the 39 that uh, are not spades, and then we're going to multiply those two numbers together. 
How many ways can we choose three spades? Well, let's find out. 13. Go to math or down just a couple. And uh, so 13c3, how many ways can you choose two or three spades? 286 different ways. We can choose the ace 2 3, the ace 2 4, ace 2 5, ace 2 6, ace 2 3. Uh, or ace two uh, seven and so on, and then we can go uh, ace three four ace three five ace three. So it would be really difficult to count, right? Uh, but thirteen c three does it in a flash, and we get two eighty six. Right. How many ways can we choose two not spades? So we'll just bring this back up. We'll change thirteen to thirty nine. Three to two. 740 way, 741 ways we can choose the uh, ace of hearts and the five of diamonds, and that's one way we could do it. And you can tell that would take a long time to count, but we use this formula, this approach here, and we get 741. And then we multiply these out, right? So uh, we stand here, we, we choose two spades, so we could choose the, uh, we're choosing a spades, three spades, Ooh, that looks good. Choosing two spades, we could choose the, uh, or three spades, we could choose the ace, two, and the three, or we could choose the ace, two, and the four, or we could choose the ace, two, and the five, and so on, and so on, and so on. And there's just a ton of these branches. How many branches are there? Well, there are, oh, that's weird. There are 286 of those branches, and then off of every one of those branches, there's 741 branches off of each one of these. 741 there, 741 there, 741 there, 741 there. So we have 286, right, all the way down this way. And then each one of these is 741, 741. So we take 286 times 741 gives us the total. So we'll take 741 times 286, get 211,926. Okay, big number. We want to get at least one diamond, um, which means we can get one diamond, two diamonds, three diamonds, four diamonds, five diamonds. Which, wow, that is uh, that's a lot. That think about what we're gonna have to do here. We would have to find a way to count uh, how to get one diamond. Okay, so one diamond, and then the rest of them would not be diamonds. So for not diamonds. Okay, so we do that a very similar to the problem just before this. Then we choose two diamonds and then three not diamonds. We choose three diamonds and two not diamonds, four diamonds and one not diamond, and all five diamonds. For that, and then we round them all up. That would be crazy, right? So there's this idea of the uh, complement, the complement to at least one diamond, which means one diamond or more diamonds than that, all the way up to all diamonds. The complement to that would be no diamonds. And if you think about it, this encompasses all the possibilities. Either I get uh, one, two, three, four, or five diamonds. Okay, so that's possible. So there's there's the, all the hands that have exactly one, exactly two, exactly three, exactly four, or exactly five diamonds. And then all the other hands that are possible in the whole wide universe of uh, card playing um, is they have no diamonds. You either have no diamonds or you have one to as many as five diamonds. That's all the possibilities. There's, what, millions and millions of possibilities, uh, and this encompasses them all, at least one or no diamonds. It's much easier to count no diamonds. How do we count no diamonds? No diamonds. Excuse me. So exactly zero diamonds. How do we pick that? Well, we want to choose from no diamonds. Well, there are 39 cards that are not diamonds. Right? So we get rid of the 13 cards that are diamonds. We don't ever choose from those. We're going to choose all five cards in a way that doesn't respect order. We're going to take them all from those 39 cards. Okay? So this is how many ways you can make uh, hands that have no diamonds at all. All, right? um, all the rest of them, that's what we actually want to count. We want to count how many ways are there to get one, two, three, four, and five diamonds. Um, well, that would be the leftovers of whatever this, you know, isn't. So however many this is, um, 
the rest of all the possible hands would be these, okay? So let's take all the possible hands, and we'll take this away from that and be left with this, okay? So how, what's all the possible hands? All possible hands. Well, we can choose any of the 52 cards. We're going to choose five of them, okay? This is all of them. This is... This includes hands that have one diamond, two diamonds, three diamonds, four diamonds, five diamonds, and no diamonds. Then we'll take away all of the no diamond hands and we'll just be left with all of the possible diamond hands. One, two, three, four, or five. So we'll subtract it. Let's do it all in one fail swoop here. Don't want that. Uh, we'll start with that. 52C5. That's all possible hands. We'll subtract away the hands that have no diamonds and be left with all the hands that have any number of diamonds in it, which is what we did want to count. Uh, so that is, uh, what, 39? Go over and get the combinations. Five, okay. So 2,023,203. So this is how many uh, hands have at least one diamond in them. And we found it much faster than it would have been to do this, because this would have been uh, one diamond. Okay, so we're going to choose 13C1, and then we're going to choose four no diamonds, so we're going to do 39C4, right? Very similar to the problem previous to this. Rewind and watch that again if you need an explanation. Then we're going to choose two diamonds. Well, that's 13C2, and then we're going to choose three not diamonds. That's 39C3. We'll multiply these together, multiply these together. We're going to add those together. We've got two more to do here. We got uh, 13C3 times 39C2, 13C4, 39C1, and then just all five are the diamonds, so we're using 13C5. And we would multiply these, multiply these, multiply these, multiply these, figure out what that is, add it all together, and then we'd be done. Or we can just calculate two things and subtract. So the idea of the complement uh, is a good thing. Okay, subtract the complement from the total, and you have the other complement. Um, just really quickly, if we said at least two diamonds, why can't I draw a diamond? At least two diamonds? Well, then, you know, this wouldn't count towards our count. So we would then also want to calculate all possible hands take away uh, all the hands that had no diamonds in them, and also take away all the hands that have only one diamond in them, okay? And the way to calculate that is exactly what we wrote down there. 13C1 times 39C4, okay? And that might seem like a lot, but it's a, a, a whole lot less than this, all right? And, uh, and actually, we already calculated this, so we'll just take away whatever this is, and, and that'll be how many hands have at, the, at least two diamonds, at least two. All right, so I've uh, altered this uh, problem a bit. So in fantasy football, you choose uh, lots of players to be on your fantasy team. Uh, you choose players from different teams, and they earn you points, and whoever gets the most points wins. Uh, and I don't know how it works in it's been a long time since I played fantasy football, but uh, let's say you choose two wide receivers. Let's just keep it simple. Um, and you, then you choose uh, one defense. And defenses give you points by you know, getting quarterback sacks and safeties and blocking field goal attempts and all this kind of stuff. Um, so how do we calculate this? Well, we're going to first pick two wide receivers. And the second thing we're going to do is choose one defense, okay. How many ways can we choose two receivers? Um, well, I listed them all here. There's a lot of them that goes on for a very long time. I couldn't find a way to list them all here, but there's 289 of them, okay. So there's 289 to choose from. We're choosing two of them. It doesn't matter what order we pick them in. Um, so we're just gonna choose from the 289. We're gonna choose uh, two of them and you know, count that many ways. And then we're going to choose one defense. How many ways can we choose one defense from 32? 32, that was a really natural one. Or we could do 
32C1. This is going to come out to be 32, though. Uh, how many ways can you choose one thing from 32 things, or 32 ways? All right, so 289, the math button down to NCR, 2. Okay, so there are 41,616 combinations of two wide receivers out of 289 choices. Um, and we'll multiply that by 32 because we're going to choose one of 32 defenses. So 1,331,712. Uh, all there you go, lots of different possibilities. And then when you put on top of that that you choose an offense and some quarterbacks and all sorts of different people. You know, there's lots of different teams you can put together uh, for your fantasy league. That's just two of the events, the event that you choose two wide receivers and the event that you choose one defense. Uh, one more, I think. All right, so you're in Paris, and they're known for their cheese. So the brochure tells you that uh, in the, the local restaurants around you, there's 45 different cheeses. As a lover of cheese, you endeavor to try 13 of them. How many different combinations of cheese can you try? Okay, so I, I included this one because I wanted to talk about the wording that they used. Um, notice it says at least, okay? And if I didn't have the teacher's manual, I would interpret that to be similar to uh, the problem with at least one spade, right? Try 13 of them. Okay, or try 14 of them, or 15 of them, 16 of them, 17 of them, and calculate all the way out until you try all 45 of them. Sorry about that. All 45 of them. Um, but that, that seemed like a lot. Okay, and your problem, it's like arcade games, and, and the numbers aren't as big. And I thought, could that be what they want? And, and then I looked at the answer, and the answer was no. It, was, it did not reflect that calculation. So uh, I wanted to talk about the wording. Sometimes the wording in the book is poor. It's a poor choice. Or maybe the person who chose the wording and the person who wrote the answer are not the same person, um, something like that. So what do we do? Um, well, apparently the book is, uh, you know, the design of the question in the book was just, there's 45 cheeses, and you want to try 13 of them. How many ways can you try 13 of 45 cheeses? Uh, let's assume that it doesn't matter whether you try Gouda and then Swiss or whatever, all the different kind of cheeses they have. Um, the order is not going to be important, so we're going to use combinations. We're going to choose 13 out of the 45. So let's just look at the formula really quick. That's 45 factorial over 13 factorial times 45 minus 13 factorial. That's 45 factorial over 13 factorial. Uh, two, three, so 32 factorial. And what does that come out to be? Oh, there's a lot of combinations. Uh, so you can good luck deciding which one. So it is. Yeah, let's uh, just. Get, uh, uh, here, we're right there. So if we move the decimal place over 10 times, we get uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we'll put another 0 for the 10th place that we move it over. And we are done. Um, so that's over uh, billions, 73 million plus combinations. All right, well, thanks for hanging in there with me, watching this whole thing. I uh, hope it was helpful. Let me know if... Uh, I can do anything else for you.